So this the idea of rotation matrices, if, you, um, if you're not familiar with it, take a look at, the, uh, at a video I made about rotation matrices. Now, how can we use that in robotics? Well, let's assume you have a robot here, right? This is my little robot with two blue wheels. And this robot is in a room or in the world where we have the x-axis right here, okay? Where we have the x-axis and the y-axis and the robot is moving. Let's say the robot is, now the robot is moving uh, on an X coordinate and a Y coordinate, but also the robot is pointing somewhere, which is a theta, an angle. Okay, so the robot in my coordinate system has an X, a Y, and a theta. Okay, and in matrix notation it would be like this. These are the components of my robot. Now, oftentimes we want to do, uh, we want to compute things with the robot based on its own center. So for example, if I know the speed at which the wheels are moving, I know the speed that the robot is going in this direction, right? But that doesn't tell me what is the speed of the robot here and here. It just tells me what the speed of the robot is with respect to itself. So, a way that I have to find uh, to, to find where the robot is, for example, in the room, in the universe, right, would be to think of two coordinate systems. One is going to be the universal coordinate system, which I'm going to call L, right here. And another one will be the robot's coordinate system, which I will actually center in the robot and the x-axis points to where the robot is going and the y-axis points to the wheels, okay? So as the robot moves, say for example the robot is now here, the world coordinates don't change, right? But the robot coordinates change. Now I have xr would be here and yr would be here, okay? So as the robot moves, the, there is a coordinate system that stays with the robot and a universal coordinate system. Now, the question now is how can I go from one coordinate system to the other? So how can I look at my robot and try to find what the X and Y positions are? And I do that with rotation matrices. So let, let, the, um, let the, coordinate, the global coordinates be X, Y, and theta, okay? The global coordinates are these. And the rotation matrix, with we, which we uh, already know, is right here. Then the robot motion in terms of global coordinates, okay? This is the global, the robot motion, R is for robot. The robot motion is going to be the rotation matrix times multiplied by the coordinates of the robot. So let's look at this more in detail. So for example, if the robot is rotated 90 degrees, that is pi halves or 90 degrees, right? The robot, let's say it's at x, y, right? And the rotation matrix is this one. Why? Because this is the cosine of 90 degrees, which is zero. This is the negative sine, which is negative one. There is zero, zero, one, zero, zero, that always there. Then the sine of 90, which is one, and the cosine, which is zero, okay? So that's how I got this matrix. I, I just did the sines and cosines of the rotation matrix using pi halves. So if this is the rotation matrix, then the coordinates of the robot in the universe, right, in the universal uh, coordinate system, would be this rotation matrix, right, multiplied by whatever my position is, x, y, and my angle theta is pi halves, because that's where I'm pointing. And we realize that we end up with, if we multiply this row, right, by this column, we end up with negative y up here. If we multiply this row with this column, we end up with x over here, and then pi halves stays there. And what this is basically saying is that if we rotate the robot 90 degrees, this is, remember, my x component of the robot and my, um, I'm sorry, my x component in, uh, of the robot and my y component of the robot, right? Okay, so what I obtain then is that my x, if the robot moves in the x direction, I'm sorry, this is the x, uh, ah, yeah, yeah, this is the x universal. So, 
in terms of the universe, we see that when the robot moves, you know, in its um, when the robot moves in the x in the x axis of my universal system, it is actually moving in its own negative y. So this is the y system for the robot, right towards the wheels. It's y r, and this is x r up here, pointing up. If I move in the negative y direction, right? If I move in the negative y, that means that I'm moving in the positive x direction of the universe, right? Of my room, of the global system. This is what it's. This is what this matrix is resulting. So, the x comp the 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 uh, x component of the universe is actually negative y of the robot. The more I go towards x the less I go towards y in the robot coordinates. In the same fashion, uh, my y component, my y coordinate, right, in the, in the room, if you will, in the universe, my y coordinates are basically robot movements on its own x-axis. So these things here are the robot. These things are the robot coordinates, right? So basically the first component which is x for the universe, is basically a negative y for the robot. And the y component of the universe actually is the x component of the robot. This is what, this is what we get. And that's pretty neat because now we can, by any, given any position of the robot, I can actually try and find out where it is in the coordinate system, right? So if the robot, for example, knows that it's traveled uh, 10 feet this way, 10 feet on the x-axis, I can just use the rotation matrix to find what that point is in the actual coordinate system. Now, there's a, a, another uh, important part, which is the translation of these coordinates, but we're not going to talk about that. We're just doing the rotation. Now, let's look at speeds now, okay, velocity. So let's say that x dot, y dot, and theta dot are the velocities on the axis and the angular velocity. So x, uh, x and y are the velocities on each of the x and y axis. So for example, if a robot goes here, right, and it's pointing that way, and then it points this way, okay, we have a speed in which the robot is moving on the on the x axis, uh, I'm sorry, on the x axis, on the y axis, and how and what's the rotation of the robot at the different times, okay? So the speed of the robot is going to be the rotation matrix. In this case, remember I was doing pi half. The rotation matrix times the speed of the robot with respect to itself. So it's just like positioning, we're just going to have the speeds now. Now, we can determine the robot's position based on the way the wheels move. And the way we do that is we need to think of how the robot moves, right? So we have a robot here. We have a robot that is that has two wheels, right? This is the case that I'm looking at. And we're going to define a point P here in the center, okay? Now the wheels are of diameter R. So R, that's the diameter here, okay? Now there's a point P in the middle. And there's the distance L to the wheels. That's L. Okay? And then the same thing over here. And then each wheel rotates with its own with its own speed. So this is the speed of the second wheel, the speed of the first wheel. Okay, a revolution. And then the angle theta will be the this angle with respect to oh sorry, this is not a very straight arrow. This angle with respect to the or uh, with the universal axis. So, these are all the things we need to consider. Now, so the robot overall speed, which is, we know it's a speed on, on the, I'm sorry, the speed on the x-axis, the y-axis, and the rotational speed, it's going to be a function of the distance L from the center of the robot to the wheels, the diameter of the wheels, the angle that the robot is pointing at, and the speed of the first and the second wheels. So if I put this all together, I cook it into a function that should give me the speed on each one of the axes and the angular speed. 
So let's see what that can be. Well, we have that uh, if, the, if the position of the robot is the rotation matrix times the position of in the universe, well, we know that to compute the position in the universe, it will be the inverse of the rotation matrix times the position of the robot. This is a matrix calculation. So I have this thing here, and I need to get rid of it. I have to multiply this whole equation by the inverse of this matrix, and I end up with this guy. All right, so then we need to compute the contribution of each wheel. So let's try this to figure this out. Let's do this. If the robot moves on the XR axis and it spins, what's happening here? If I have the robot, right, and it is just, it is just spinning, it is just spinning, okay? Well, let's think about it. The point P moves with half the speed, okay? So here's the, here's the, the, the robot again. Let's look at this robot again. Let's say it's it's spinning like this, right? So this is the wheels, right? And it has a point P here, and it's spinning just like this, okay? Well, one wheel moves, and then the other wheel moves at a slower speed, and the point P in the middle actually does not move at the speed of this wheel, nor the speed of this wheel. It, it actually adds the velocities, because if this wheel is moving this way, and this other wheel is moving that way, that, that's when the robot spins, right? Spin it around its own axis. However, you know, the thing is that this wheel goes at one speed and this wheel goes at another speed, and the point P will actually go at the speed of one wheel plus the speed of the other. So for example, if this speed goes at 30, and this speed goes at zero, meaning it's quiet, right? The robot is going to spin, and this point is going to start moving like this at actually not 30, because this wheel that moves at zero slows it down. So it's going to be moving at the speed of one wheel plus the speed of the other wheel. Now, the speed of one wheel, and the other wheel is the same, is one half of the diameter times the rotational velocity. So basically, the circumference of the wheel and how many revolutions per second it moves, right? So that's the speed of each wheel. Is Remember, it's the, the circumference of the wheel, right? Which is, uh, if we have r being the diameter, the radius is half, right? So this is one half r, right? Times the revolution, the speed of the wheel. So we do that for both wheels, and we end up with the speed of the robot is the sum of the speed of each individual wheel. Now, now we need to find the angular velocity. This is a little bit more complicated. So if we're thinking of a robot like this, right, that's moving, and this is P, this is point P. If the robot is moving or spinning, right, this point P is moving at a certain arc. And that arc is basically this, it has this radius. So the distance between P to the wheel that's moving backwards, right? So let me try and draw this correctly so then you get a better picture of what this is. So if I have my robot here, this is my point P, and this is my other wheel. So this wheel is going this way, and this wheel is moving that way. Therefore, the robot is spinning here. Now, it spins around this wheel here. This is the L, the distance from P to that, uh, to that wheel. And actually, P is going to be moving like this, because it's spinning around that wheel. So, P describes an arc of a circle of radius 2L, right? I'm sorry, this is, the, this is the whole thing, right? So it's going to be spinning around itself. If it spins around itself, P is going to describe a circle of radius 2L. 
So the angular velocity of one wheel, right, that one wheel adds, is the velocity of the wheel, r divided by 2 times this, right? I'm sorry, it's the rate is the diameter of the wheel plus the velocity divided by this arc. And the other wheel that's moving in the other direction, so it's going at an angular velocity that's the opposite, right? It's just going to be negative that. Now, if we put it all together, the robot is not moving along the x-axis, only along the y, only along the uh, x-axis, not along the y-axis. So the y component of this uh, robot is zero. The x component of this robot is the speeds of both wheels, and the y, and the theta component of the robot is the angular speed of the point P, which is the robot. So this will be my it'll be my rotation matrix inverse times this matrix. So for example, if L is one, so a robot is you know two centimeters wide, so P is exactly one centimeter from each wheel. Let's say wheels are one centimeter uh, in diameter, and, and I know that I have R, but it signifies diameter. And with speeds of four revolutions on one wheel and two revolutions uh, on the other one, and the angular uh, and, and an angle of uh, pi half, so pointing 90, spinning 90 degrees, right? I just take the rotation matrix, which is this one, four pi halves. I just have, and let's say that um, the robot moves with, uh, and I have this, and let's say the robot is at uh, three zero. Where am I here? If I look at this, right, if uh, with phi equals four, I try to do this, I do this, right? I compute this. So 4 divided by 2 plus, and this one is 2, right? 2 divided by 2, that is equal to 3. That is this number here, right? Then 0, right here. Then 1, which is the number down here. So if I multiply, if I multiply the rotation matrix by this, I get this rotation, this uh, coordinate system, this speeds. And what, what it's saying is that it, the robot's moving with speed negative 3 on the y-axis, pointing downwards and spinning, and spinning to the left. So if you analyze this, mo this movement, that's, you're going to find out exactly that. Because uh, there's zero velocity on x, negative 3 on y, and uh, it's pointing downwards because of pi halves. Now, uh, I'll let you do this, uh, try to graph this, you know, try to see what happens at different times, what happens with different angles, and you will see the different speeds and you can graph them and plot them. I hope this helps to get the intuitions up on rotation matrices and robot uh, speeds and what's called forward kinematics. The goal with this video is just so you get the notation. You can go to more specific stuff uh, later on. Bye.